I remember well that Saturday, my husband David and I were standing in a line. We actually had two funerals to go to on that day. It was just a month after our daughter Hope had died. And I remember standing there in the line for the funeral and all of a sudden realizing that I didn't know what I was going to say to this couple whose child had just died. I wanted to say something helpful and something meaningful and personal and I just felt at a loss. I remember stumbling through that awkward situation with that couple, and I walked away with a lot more compassion for people who hadn't known what to say to us or what to do for us. And so they did nothing or they said nothing. In the years since then, I've dealt with a lot of grieving people, and we often talk about the things people do and say, some of those things that are really helpful and those things that are also really hurtful. If I open it up for questions, there's one question that always comes up. People want to know, what should I do? What should I say to that person who's grieving? A short time ago, I put a questionnaire up on my website, and I asked grieving people to answer three questions. I asked them to tell me, what is something someone said to you that was especially meaningful or helpful to you? What's something someone did for you that was meaningful, that was memorable? And then the third question, what do you wish people understood about your grief that they don't seem to understand? And I've put them together into a book called What Grieving People Wish You Knew about what really helps and what really hurts. I wanna share with you what I'm gonna call the top four things that grieving people really wish you understood about grief. And the first one is that grieving people really wish you understood how much it means for you to just show up. Show up on the day of the accident at the house. Show up at the visitation show up at the funeral, and to just keep showing up over the months and oftentimes years after a significant loss. And the thing is, I think one reason we don't show up is because we're not sure what to do or what to say when we get there. And here's the thing. Grieving people aren't necessarily wanting you to do anything, but grief is so very lonely. And it matters so much for people to just show up and to just be there oftentimes listening more than they talk. So if you're afraid, okay, well, I'm not going to know what I'm going to say when I get there. Don't worry about that. It's really just about being there, maybe helping out a little bit. You don't always have to have the right or the perfect thing to say. In fact, there probably isn't a perfect thing to say. And I hope this maybe takes a little bit of the pressure off because I think sometimes we think, I've got to come up with a thing to say that's going to make this okay that's going to provide some kind of insight maybe they hadn't thought of before or some especially helpful thing. But here's the thing. Your words can't fix this. And I say that to take the pressure off of you. Don't think that you have to come up with something that's going to make this okay for that grieving person because there's really nothing you can say that would make it okay for this grieving person. So just show up. Speak up. I think one reason we oftentimes don't say anything to the person who's grieving is we see them, maybe it's a little ways down the road, and they look pretty happy that day. And so we think to ourselves, you know what, I'm not going to say anything because I don't want to make that person sad. Well, what you need to know is grief is kind of like a computer program that's running in the background. It's in the background of their minds all of the time. And so when you see someone and you bring up their loss, in fact, it doesn't make them sad. Now, perhaps they'll cry and you think, oh no, I've done the wrong thing. I've made that person cry. But that isn't the case at all. What you've done is you have allowed that person to release some tears that were already inside. And so it is a great gift to actually bring it up when you show up. The second thing grieving people really wish you knew is how much they really are not interested in you bringing up someone else's loss 
or even necessarily talking about your own loss a great deal. We all do this. I've done it too. I think it's the kind of thing where we, we, we show up and it's a little bit awkward. We're not sure what to say. And I think our minds kind of work like computers. We go on a computer search in our mind for a match for this situation. And so to fill up the awkward silence, we sometimes begin to talk about someone else we knew who had had this experience. Or sometimes it's because we've had a loss ourselves. And so we go to that person and it seems so very natural to begin talking about our own experience when this happened to us. But here's the thing. Our stories about someone else who had something similar happen, you know what? It's just not helpful. What it does is it takes the focus off the person who's grieving and puts it on someone else. And frankly, when we're grieving, we want other people to esteem our grief because sometimes it feels like when we tell the story of someone else or even if we just plunge in to telling our own experience, it comes across to the grieving person sometimes like, you know, your loss really shouldn't hurt so much because a lot of people have had this experience or plenty of people have had this. And so it's a way, oftentimes the way it feels to a grieving person is that we're diminishing their loss. And what we want to do instead is esteem their loss. Let them know that we don't expect that our words can fix it. And we don't expect that any of this is going to be fixed anytime soon, but that that person who has died is worth so much and that it must hurt so much to have lost that person that we esteem that loss. That means that we listen more than we talk. And we just don't offer a bunch of other people's stories because honestly, it just isn't that helpful. The third thing I want to say about what grieving people really wish you knew about what really hurts and really helps is that grieving people really wish that you would talk to them about the person who has died. Now, once again, I think we don't do this because we're afraid to bring it up. We think it's a good day and we don't want to bring it up. But people who responded to my online questionnaire, the thing they said they want to hear most often, if you want to know the one word that you can say to someone that will always be helpful to them, what they really want to hear is that person's name. They just miss hearing that person's name. So use that person's name when you talk to them. And it can be something really simple because they want to hear the person's name. They also told me, many people told me this. They said, I want people to tell me about specific memories that they had with the person that they loved. In other words, they don't want you to be just general, like, I really miss that person. But they want you to say, you know, I really miss seeing her smile. I really miss seeing him throw his head back and laugh. I really miss going out to barbecue with him. Be very specific about something, as well as specific about memories. Maybe even write them out so that person can look at them again and again. I had people tell me that they loved it when they got something in the mail or someone actually took the time to write out a memory that they had with that person who had died, and it was something that they cherished. So say that person's name. Bring up a specific memory about that person. And I tell you what, when that person begins to weep because you've talked about the person who, who died and you've told a specific memory that awakens something in them that in a sense makes them miss that person too, don't think that you've done the wrong thing. Don't begin to apologize. Oh, I didn't want to make you cry. Here's the thing. You didn't make that person cry. You allowed that person to release some of the tears that are already inside. And I got to tell you, when you are filled up with grief, it is such a relief to be able to let some of those tears out. And especially to let some of those tears out with someone who isn't intimidated by it. Someone who doesn't get scared off by it. And even better than that is shedding some of those tears with someone who will actually shed some tears with you. 
you know, a lot of times it's not about saying the right thing at all, but about being willing to shed tears, being willing to weep with those who weep. The fourth thing I want to tell you about what grieving people really wish you understood about their grief, about what really helps and what really hurts, is that they need you to understand that they need you to give them some time and some space to simply be sad. I remember after my daughter Hope died, going to the cosmetics counter, and I remember asking the girl at the cosmetics counter, is this mascara going to run down my face when I cry? And she kind of laughed when I asked the question, and she said, well, are you going to be crying? And I said, yes, I am. I just had so many tears that needed to come out. I remember also then shortly after that going on a choir retreat with the choir at my church, and I remember standing up and saying to the people that were good friends, they had walked through this with us, and I said, I need you to know that I haven't lost my faith. I'm not slipping into some deep, dark depression. I'm just sad. (laughs) I lost someone that I loved dearly, and I need you to give me some time and space to just be sad. Sometimes I think we approach people's sadness as if that's a problem to be solved. And maybe we say, okay, I want to go over and cheer that person up, or uh, we got to get them out of being sad. Let me tell you, sadness is not a problem. Sadness is part of the process. It's part of the process. Tears, I think, are actually a tool, oftentimes, that God uses to wash away this sorrow that has settled in our soul. So don't approach people thinking that you somehow have to always be cheering them up or that the goal is to get them over their sadness. Now, I know part of your reasoning for that is you're thinking that this sorrow must be miserable. And I suppose in a sense there is. There's there's a lot of pain that's a part of grief. But you should probably understand for, a, for quite a while, and it's a different amount of time for different people, but it's our sense of sadness, our grief over the person who has died that in a sense keeps us as the grieving person feeling close to that person. When we allow ourselves to feel sad, we, we feel close to that person that we miss so much again. And honestly, that's not something that we want to let go of very quickly. So give us some time and some space to just be sad. A lot of times people who, we we want to show that person who's grieving that we care. And so we see them and we ask them a very natural question. A question I've often asked, but honestly, sometimes after I've asked it, I wished I didn't. And it's a very natural question. It's just a question, how are you? And we ask it because we care, and we want to know how they're doing. But one thing you should probably understand about people who are grieving is when you ask that question that way, it almost feels like you have to give a report, like, you know, I'm doing this much better than last time. Oftentimes the grieving person feels like the answer you really want is, I'm doing great, I'm doing better. (laughs) But, you know, the road of grief is up and down. And the truth is, sometimes it gets worse before it gets better. And it can be really hard to say to this person, you you sense they're wanting to hear a good report, and it can really be hard to say something honest, like, well, I'm weeping all the time, or I'm feeling really lonely, or I feel a lot of fear about the future. I mean, those aren't the kind of ways we want to answer that how are you question. So let me suggest this, as if you really want to be a good friend to someone who's grieving, one thing you might do is think in advance about a creative question. And the truth is you're asking, how are you? 
but you're asking it in a different way. You're going to ask it in a way that acknowledges that it makes sense that that person would be grieving rather than you're hoping to hear that grief is a thing of the past. So maybe your question is simply, what's your grief like these days? Do you hear the difference? It sounds a little different because you're acknowledging that you expect that they would be grieving and yet you're inviting them to share with you honestly about what their grief is like. So think of creative questions. Maybe it's something like, when is it you really miss? And then say the name of the person. What are the times you're finding really hard these days as you walk through this grief? Finally, let's talk a little bit about talking about heaven. You know, heaven is an incredible promise, isn't it? Isn't it the substance of our hope? The substance that brings us comfort in the midst of grief? To know that this life is not all there is? It's an incredible comfort to know that the person who has died, who is in Christ, is not gone, but in fact, we can anticipate seeing that person again. It's incredible. But the truth is, sometimes people talk to a grieving person about heaven as if that should make everything okay, as if they shouldn't be sad because they know that the grieving person is in heaven. I remember a short time after my daughter Hope died, going out on my back patio late at night and just looking up at the stars. And I remember saying to God, God, I know that hope is with you, but it just feels so very far away from me. You know, the, the knowledge of hope being in heaven just didn't have the power to take away all of my pain. So as you talk with people about heaven, don't expect that that makes everything okay, that it fixes the hurt. So if we've talked about these four things that grieving people really wish you knew. They really wish you knew how much it means for you to just show up and to say something, even if you don't know the right thing to say, even if all you can say is, I don't know what to say. And instead of saying, well, call me if you need anything, instead maybe you say, you know what, I'm going to come over on Thursday and wash your laundry. Or I'm going to come over every Friday throughout the summer to mow your lawn. So show up. And then secondly, they don't want to hear stories about other people's losses. They don't want you to compare their loss to someone else to say something like, well, at least this is better than that. They just want you to esteem their loss rather than diminish it by talking about your own or someone else's. And then thirdly, they want you to know how much they still want to talk about the person who died. I think of one woman who wrote me, and she said to me on my questionnaire, she said, I wish people would know how much I want to talk about my mother, but how hard it is for me to bring it up. So bring it up. Bring up the loss. Say that person's name. Show that you're a safe person to continue to be able to talk to about loss. And then finally, grieving people want you to know that they need some time and space to simply be sad, that you don't have to rush in and fix it, that just as we oftentimes need time for a physical injury to heal, that time is also needed for this deep sorrow to heal and that you're going to be the friend who's not going to rush them through it. That you, in fact, want to be as patient with the healing process as I think God is patient with the healing process. You know, sometimes we are in such a hurry for people to feel better, and yet the Lord is so patient with us. He's not pushing, he's not trying to fix, but he is at work. As we take in his word, it begins to do a work on the grieving person's emotions, and God does a healing work within us. So I appreciate the fact that you've watched this because you want to be a good friend to the person who is grieving. And you know that grieving person doesn't expect you to do it all right. 
or to say just the right thing or to show up at the perfect time. They just want to know that you're willing to walk with them, not just for a few days after the funeral, but in the weeks and months to come, that you will be there and that you want to be a person who wants to do and say things that really help and not something that really hurts.